Really, guys? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 10th episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 215th episode overall titled Glyphhanger. We begin this episode with a racist interpretation of an Egyptian man coming toward a thing he calls the Staff of Power, grabbing it. Then Adam, also in similar attire, comes out with a few others and they start going after the guy. This is definitely another terrible stunt show, huh? Well, at least the fighting is actually pretty cool. Lots of flips and stuff. Adam gets the staff, holding it up to the sun, and it causes the guy to explode into gold glitter, which is a cool stage show effect. The crowd that we now see applauses at the performance. Out of a near birdbath, Divatox is watching via the periscope, and Porto talks about how Divatox was once engaged to a guy named Pharaoh, who also left her at the altar like Malagor. Then Divatox demands that Porto gets Pharaoh to come help her kill the Power Rangers, and she says how it's just about revenge, no matter how politically incorrect. So they're actually aware of how awkward and cultural, like, appropriation-y this is. On the ship, Pharaoh has showed up, and Divatox explains that he owes her because he sent her to therapy. <laughs> Well, she gives him a detonator to plant at the Angel Grove stunt show, and Pharaoh automatically knows that she's talking about the Turbo Rangers, and he says that he's got a staff, and it looks just like the prop from earlier, that he's not afraid to use. Pharaoh shows up behind the set and he plants the bomb, but then Adam shows up, calling for someone named Mr. Peabody. Pharaoh pretends to be a statue frozen in place, and Adam comes up and gets the staff out of his hands with Mr. Peabody, talking about how he's going to take this and not actual prop staff home to touch up the paint. Mr. Peabody tells him to sign it out on a clipboard. Then Mr. Peabody's newspaper and all the signs around him start turning into hieroglyphics. Yeah, here we go, guys. Pharaoh is mad that his staff is gone now, and as Adam walks home, he's turning all the signs into hieroglyphics. He shows up at the study hall in the high school, meeting up with Kat and Justin, who are studying ancient Egypt because God forbid anything not murder you over the head on Power Rangers. Justin is impressed with the staff, and he says that it looks like the real thing. He's going to show the book to Adam, but he's confused because this entire book is now hieroglyphics. And Kat points out how that was definitely all in English before. Can't get anything past Kat. They then see that everything is changing around them. Underwater, Divatox chastises Pharaoh for ruining things by losing his staff, and she refuses to send him home until he makes sure the bomb blows up, so she's sending him down to guard it. Meanwhile, Adam, Justin, and Kat are at the youth center, and they see that the sign has changed to the hieroglyphics. They talk to Demetria, who gives some bullshit questions about how something old could have done this, and they're confused as to what the hell this could be, because yeah, okay, whatever, fuck you, Demetria. Inside the youth center, an old man is yelling at Stone about his menu being in hieroglyphics, acting, what kind of nonsense is this? Chill out. Also, the monkeys plan to draw how they actually got turned into monkeys. That actually kind of makes sense. A couple of kids are following Pharaoh into the set, and he tells them to buzz off, but these kids literally kick this monster down, and they say that his costume sucks. This episode sucks. Divatox sees this, and she is so mad about how much he sucks. Rygog says that they should get his staff back to him, so he's actually useful, and Divatox agrees, so she's sending down Piranatrons. They appear around Adam, Justin, and Kat, who fight them off, but they're clearly going for the staff, hitting it out of Adam's hands. While they're busy, the Piranatrons steal his staff, and Kat goes after them, but then she's too late. They leave with it. Adam explains how he has no power because he made it himself. They meet up with Tommy and Tanya in the youth center, and they update them on what's going on, and honestly, they say nothing. At all. Then Mr. Peapotty shows up, giving the staff to Adam, telling him that he signed out for the staff, but then he forgot to take it home. And then he bitches about how he needs to be better. Adam is super confused, but then they realize there's actually more than one staff. And Tommy says there has to be more to it, and Justin yells, A DETONATOR! out in public, like that wouldn't have caused a panic. The Rangers leave to go to the stunt show and check it out. They get there, looking at things, and Mr. Peabody is there, and he asks how they beat him back, which is kind of funny. But then Tommy and Adam start quizzing him about his inventory so they can find out that something that doesn't belong because it's actually a bomb, and it turns into some weird montage. Peabody sees that they're there, and Porto assures that they won't be able to disarm the bomb in time. Pharaoh shows up with his staff and Divatox flirts with him a bit, telling him that she'll send him down soon. Down where? Then Divatox explains to Porto that at least if they kill him, it'll be fine. Then Justin finds a weird pyramid and it shocks him. Mr. Peabody has no idea what it is and Adam agrees to take it home, so Mr. Peabody leaves. Cat tells him to be careful, so... Shifting the turbo! The now morphed rangers stand there while Adam takes out his turbo thunder cannon, getting ready to blow the bomb up, but then Pharaoh and Perantron show up. Now it's time for a good old fashioned fight against the monsters. Also, there's a pretty rough battle song going on during this fight that makes me want to go to sleep for some reason. The Rangers try to focus on Pharaoh, but they really suck against him, and Adam even fires his thunder cannon at him, but he gets reflected back. Divatox is watching this, and she calls for the torpedoes to be fired, which explode around Pharaoh, making him giant. The Rangers call out their Turbo Zords, forming the Turbo Megazord. Then, Giant Pharaoh spits fire. Since when could he do that? When the Megazord gets back up, it's suddenly sunset before it's just night instantly, and the Rangers are really terrible against Pharaoh, who's beating them up pretty good. 
Then Pharaoh starts expositing to himself about how he shouldn't work with Divatox. He should just go solo, which gives the rangers a chance to get him from behind. But then he spits fire again, so they use their shield against him. And then they slowly start to get the advantage, knocking his staff down and shattering its glass. Finally, the rangers call out their Turbo Megazord Saber, killing Pharaoh. Porto tells Divatox how he died, and Divatox does not care at all. The rangers are back to where they were before, but now it's not night anymore for some reason. And they see that Mr. Peabody has the bomb in his hand. And Adam just points his giant fucking gun at him, making him throw the thing in the air, which Adam blows up. I mean, Christ, that was not very diplomatic. Then the signs turn back to normal with Justin notes, and I have to wonder if Mr. Peabody is wondering why the voice of a 12-year-old boy is coming out of this adult creature. At the youth center, all the teens are hanging out, and someone comes up saying that there's something cool happening out in the courtyard. And it's a giant mural that's been done by Vulcan Skull, which generic art critics are talking about and they keep wiping paint on Stone's face. The end. I will start by saying that this is the first of three Turbo episodes to be directed by Paul Schreier, aka Bulk. He directs this episode in the next two. I'm glad to see that even though he was bored of being a monkey and he wanted to do something else with his time, so he got to do it. Overall, this episode's kind of settled into that so bad it's almost okay territory, but I could be getting Stockholm Syndrome over here at this point. I think the jokes with the villains land and are genuinely funny, and I think the rangers are still absolute idiots. It's kind of blowing my mind how they haven't touched what I would call a storyline in like six episodes or so. So next time is an episode I vividly remember as a child. But until then, may the power protect you.